we've got to talk about this uh, port, this American funded and built port on Gaza's beach. We've got to talk about the impact of it and what's to come. There's a couple of factors. I'm not going to talk about the gas. There's a couple of things. And one is when they took the builder's rubble to start building this pier, they took it from the remains of the bombed Palestinian homes. So they stole basically the stone that these houses were made of. They bombed them and then they collected up the rubble and started to build a port. There's thousands of people lost, still missing, that are under the rubble. So when you manage to get an excavator and you take it to these places and you pick up all of this rubble and then you cart it all the way down the seacoast road to build this pier, in that will be the remains of Palestinians who are still missing. When you walk on this pier, you're going to be walking literally on the remains of Palestinian people. You're going to be walking across a pier or driving, which is more to the point, over the remains of the dead who never got a burial, who never got named and who never got rescued. Children, the skulls of children will be amongst this rubble, a road of the dead. When these homes were bombed, Palestinians only had their hands to dig out their relatives who could be heard screaming and crying for help for over 72 hours. Both the Israelis and the Americans said, oh, no, no, we can't get you any excavators. We can't get any bulldozers. You know, we can't get you. The civil defense teams didn't have the equipment to, to pull these people out from underneath the concrete. And yet it took America less than eight hours to deliver 30 brand new bulldozers and excavators and heavy machinery, all the stuff that you need to build a port. When the Palestinians were crying to get their relatives out, the Israelis had um, torched all of the civil defense equipment. So there were no bulldozers. They died crushed to death, slowly and in a lot of pain, screaming and crying for help for over 72 hours. Just think about that. But in eight hours, the Americans are able to suddenly deliver a whole brand new range of bulldozers and excavators. They can do that to build a port, but they can't do it to save the lives of hundreds of Palestinian people. So that kind of crosses out the word humanitarian. You're talking about, oh, this is a humanitarian port. Well, it wasn't very humanitarian to deny the Palestinians, the bulldozers that you've been able to ship from Cyprus within eight hours. Those people lay there for 72 hours waiting to be rescued under the rubble of their homes, but you couldn't get a bulldozer out for them. Gaza's beach, the place that all Palestinians go in the hot weather, the place they swim, where children have flown kites, where they gallop their horses up the beach. There's wedding venues, there were, there were restaurants and cafes. People flock to the beach, flock to the beach in the summer to cool themselves down and use the beach as a way to get away from the misery and suffering in the colder months. What about the fishing industry? It's gone. The beach is controlled. It's taken over by American troops and mercenaries being paid, private firms being paid to secure the area. So 2,000 troops will suddenly become 20,000 troops. The whole beach is a military zone, a barracks with a controlled entry and exit point where large cargo ships will be able to moor and ship away Palestinians into permanent exile. There are so many reasons why this port is not humanitarian, but this port must go. This port cannot exist because if it does, then Gaza doesn't exist. Thank you for listening.